Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? Welcome to DFR Tuesday. I am in Dallas, Texas, in my clinic and um, taking my little lunch break. So I was looking forward to speaking with everybody today. I gotta just get this music down. So if you have any questions for me specifically about DFR, put it in, um, under the chat in the upper right corner, just type in a message and I'm happy happy to answer that to start off with before I get into the content that I want to discuss. But I'm hoping everybody's having a great week. We're having a really good week so far. I can't believe it's only Tuesday. It feels more like, gosh, it feels more like a Thursday. Hi, Patricia. Where are you, where are you joining from? New York, all right. Hmm. Cleveland, Ohio. That's where uh, that's where our headquarters are. Sure. So Johan has a question regarding on how BFR helps muscles that are not downstream from the straps or the cuffs or the bands, whatever you want to call them. Hi, Terry from Georgia. Um, okay, so there's a couple, there's a couple, well, first of all, what I want to clarify is that we're not exactly sure about all of the mechanisms. Last week, I shared, um, I shared an article from uh, Beardsley out of the UK regarding a lot of literature pointing towards fatigue being the number one factor in causing strength and hypertrophy. So let me kind of clarify uh, Johan's question here, and I hope I'm saying that right. I'm assuming I'm saying that right, but if I'm not, let me know. So I'm gonna put this cuff on, and I think everyone knows here pretty much how we put the cuff on, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna attach this as tight as I can get it. Johan, yep, all right, cool. I'm gonna touch this as tight as I can, and it's up high on the arm as much as it can. Okay. And of course, I'm wearing a black undershirt today so that it's really hard to see. Okay, now when I put this on, and I'm gonna use this myself, I make sure that this little valve is facing forward so that when I'm attaching, when I'm attaching the pump, it's really easy just to, to clip in, okay? If it's the other way, it's really difficult. So you wanna make sure that you depress, you depress this little clip and you plug right in. Now it should be that easy to plug in. If it's not, we were having issues with the little O-ring on the older versions of the cuffs and they would dry out after a few months, especially with heavy wear, like in a clinic. You just, if it's not going on easily, don't force it. What you wanna do is you wanna just put a little bit of massage lotion, a little bit of um, whatever you use, uh, Vaseline around that O-ring and it'll hydrate it and then it's easy to clip on and off. You don't wanna try to force it. That's where we get a lot of uh, breaks when you're trying to force it because it, it's dried out a little bit. The new cuffs, this Gen 3, we changed out this mechanism so we shouldn't have that problem anymore. Um, Lewis breathes on the valve and it's enough moisture to get the valve on. Yeah, that's, that's a good way too. Um, I'm afraid of my breath, my coffee breath on the cuff, what that'll do to the poor cuff. I think I'm just going to continue to use, um, I think that's been the one good thing about masks with COVID is that I can feel like I can have coffee breath and not kill anybody, um, on my treatment table. Anyway. All right. So I plug this in now, what we're talking about is it's pretty clear that when I do a bicep curl with a cuff on my upper extremity, why I get benefit distal because, you know, we're doing the exercise that's distal to the cuff or away from the cuff. And there's many mechanisms. Like I was mentioning, there's, um, there's, um, metabolite accumulation and that metabolite accumulation means byproducts of exercise get accumulated 
beneath the cuff, like hydrogen ion and, um, and others, and lactate. What, and what that does is it creates a more acidic environment. So we, our exercise acidosis increases distal to the cuff. When that happens, it pre-fatigues some of the tissue. And so if I pre-fatigue tissue, what happens is I have to recruit other tissue in order to continue the exercise. So you pre-fatigue tissue, other, extra, other tissue or fibers or motor units have to be recruited in order to continue the exercise. And that's why we get recruitment of type two motor units, even um, with light loads, which we typically don't get with just light load resistance training. So now on to the story and the question. If I am exercising and pre-fatiguing the muscles here, I am gonna get more emphasis distal, or sorry, proximal to the cuff. So like in the shoulder, if I'm doing a, a shoulder type exercise, if I'm doing like a glute bridge, I'm utilizing and, and really fatiguing out my hamstrings, my glutes are gonna have to engage. That's one theory on why, is that your pre-fatiguing tissue, other tissue is going to have to compensate and you're gonna get adaptation. The other theory um, is that there's a systemic effect. And so we have localized endocrine reaction, we have paracrine reaction. We have all these things happening at the muscle itself, distal to the cuff, especially because you're creating a, a hypoxic environment. My body recognizes that it's hypoxic. It knows that it's a stress and it's going to have some sort of adaptation effect. And we're tapping into that adaptation effect. One of those adaptation effects is that you get signaling to the brain. The brain thinks that you're doing damage to the tissue. It's going to start releasing factors like growth hormone in order to the whole system. Now growth hormone in itself is not an anabolic. It doesn't help us grow um, muscle size or strength, but there are other things, insulin growth factor, mechanoreceptors, there's other things that are going on that is causing more recruitment. And so we get three different effects when I put the cuff on. I get a distal effect, meaning things downstream from the cuff. And those are my best effect. My second best effect is proximal to the cuff. My third effect is called a crossover effect. So even though I exercise this joint and maybe I have a sling on, I still can get benefit on my opposite side. So three different effects, distal to the cuff, proximal to the cuff, crossover to the cuff. So how do I play that as a role in rehab? If I have a low back pain patient and I wanna improve the muscle strength and hypertrophy of let's say lumbar multifidus in the lower back, the, the primary stabilizer of the lumbar spine, active stabilizer of the lumbar spine, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recruit a bunch of systemic effect. I might have somebody go for a walk for 15 minutes with the cuffs on, which then is gonna signal this systemic um, pool of healing, I like to call it. And then I'll do back specific exercises, like let's say a bird dog and a plank and a uh, side plank. So we try to recruit as much as we can. We get the body in a repair mode and then we can stimulate other tissue. Even if we're not directly affecting it, we can get a, uh, a better effect than without using the cuffs. So Johan, I hope that answers your question. Have you used BFR for osteoporosis or osteopenia? Absolutely. Um, and I'm sorry if I don't pronounce this right. Payal, is that right? Um, so I wrote a whole course for MedBridge. If you want to take that course, go to medbridge.com and uh, click on the link. And there's one on stimulating osteoblast uh, formation. Um, I also use this for uh, stress fractures and non um, and fractures that are not exactly lining up correctly. And it helps to stimulate bone growth through stress um, but also through uh, hormones, endocrine, and the paracrine system. So uh, lots of cool benefits. Um, I think another way to do this for osteopenia and osteoporosis would be to use a vibration plate. 
So we have our vibration plate. It's in my, um, yeah, I have a, a infrared sauna in the clinic and a red light therapy. And my vibration plate sits in the red light because you're standing the whole time. It's one of the reasons I got a standing red light. I have two panels, one in the front, one in the back, and I turn on the, uh, the uh, vibration plate so people get better lymphatic flow to the lower extremity, they get um, osteoblast formation, um, stimulates stem cells according to the literature when you're using BFR. And so it's, um, it's, it's a cool time to kind of work on both. But if you just do normal exercise, just like walking, Walking with the BFR cuffs would be a great way for somebody that's osteoporotic or has osteopenia. Uh, yeah, any type of vibration plate is fine. And I can talk about that next week. I can pull the study. I don't have it sitting right in front of me. Um, but I can talk about that next week. Terry, if I use cuffs on the left arm only while right heels, will left arm become bigger than the right? Well, um, it may a, a little bit, I mean, it depends on how long you go for. In my experience, the, um, if I have one, if I have one leg that's atrophied, let's say somebody has a anterior cruciate ligament, uh, repair and the right quadricep and right calf is atrophied. I used to want the, a higher systemic effect. So I would put cuffs on both limbs. And what I found is that the, the cuff size will grow a little bit faster in the, um, sorry, when you have cuffs on both legs, both, both sides will grow. So I switched my thinking and I, I typically only do the cuff on the atrophied side until it kind of catches up and then I'll do it on both sides for symmetry. Um, but Terry, I wouldn't like over concern yourself about it because I mean, depending on how old you are, our, our, the amount of testosterone and, and anabolics that are flowing through our system after the age of about 25 or 30, you're not going to see, you're not going to see a crazy difference left versus right. You will see a change, but it won't be, it's nothing that I would be concerned about. Meaning, oh, I don't want to train this side because I've got one, one wing is in a brace or something. I'd rather get that crossover effect. I'd rather keep the strength and size in that one arm so I don't get atrophy in both arms. All right, that's a great couple of questions. I love it. Any other questions um, that come up? All right, so I, I just went, wanted to do a little, a little quick showing. I did a, um, I did a, um, a photo shoot last week with the new cuffs. Um, I've been told we will be caught up with all of our back orders, which is almost a thousand back orders um, within the next couple of weeks. So we're getting them out as soon as we can. Um, it takes a bunch of assembly and there's other things that have to go into it because people that were assembling, we were having a problem with and they weren't getting done right. And so now we're assembling them in house and it's, uh, they're working pretty much 24 seven to get these all caught up. So, I've got my, this is the pro version. There's two different versions. There's a consumer version and then there's the pro version. The pro version gives me a little bit more flexibility as a clinician. If I am um, a home user, I'm not a clinician. I'm not using this on anybody else. I would just get the consumer version. And so, you know, we can turn this on. I can't see my own fingers. And you'll see it says start uh, pro. And I'm just going to start exercise, choose the arm or leg, super simple. And in the pro version, we can do manual setting, meaning I already know what my limb occlusion pressure is. I can set my pressure manually. I can find my personal pressure, or I can do ischemic preconditioning, which is 100% uh, limb occlusion. So we don't have IPC on uh, the consumer version for safety reasons. We think that you should be trained um, to know when to use that. So I'm just going to do a manual. Okay, and I'm gonna do it at 120 millimeters of mercury because that's the pressure that I typically use. And now I'm relaxing my limb. Okay, and it's that fast. Now I disconnect and now I can start using this limb 
for exercise. If I'm doing strength and hypertrophy, I'm gonna do 30 repetitions, then take a 30 second rest, 15 repetitions, 15 second rest, 15 repetitions, 30 second rest, 15 repetitions, 30 second rest. So it's 30, 15, 15, 15. I'm using a load that gets me pretty close to failure, but not quite failure. After those 75 total reps for that exercise, I would deflate. I would then move on to my next exercise. If I have cuffs on both limbs, which I typically recommend, it would simply be plug in and I can, on here you'll see, I can just repeat the pressure and I can just repeat what I had before. So it's very fast and then I would just take it off, put it on the other limb. And so your initial setup will take a couple minutes because you're gonna find what each what pressure is in each limb and then you'll set it. In the consumer version, it will remember what your last arm pressure was, so it'll automatically go back. If you're sharing it with somebody else, it's a little bit more uh, convoluted. You'll have to you'll have to retest your uh, limb occlusion pressure because they're designed for individual use only. So hopefully that helps seeing how fast it is. Um, and, and you only have to charge those about like in the clinic. I'll probably charge it like once every two weeks or so. It's not. Um, the battery doesn't get overutilized. In the pro version, you can connect two pumps and you can exercise and it will modulate the pressure depending on what part of the exercise you're in. So when I'm doing a curl, my bicep is pushing up against the cuff, there's more pressure, it will automatically regulate. So they call it auto regulation. Not better, just some people like it. Um, it's a little bit more comfortable. It's not as, as much stress on the tissue when I'm in this up position or the concentric phase of the exercise. Can I go over the first option other than manual choice? Just received a new pro unit. Sure, happy to. So, so I go here, um, let me go to my home screen Okay, so update settings would be when a new version comes out, meaning that we you either see on social media or we send out an email that says, hey, update your, we, we made some changes. Um, you don't have to do that too often, um, but like an iPhone, you know, it's gonna update every once in a while. And we did it so that way you don't have to send it in and get changes done, we can do it on the, on the web. Okay, so we're gonna start exercise. You're gonna choose arm or leg. So I just showed you the manual pressure. You can either you can either go into manual pressure and then adjust the pressure. Like I can go, um, like I can adjust the pressure down if I know that my 50% of my limb occlusion pressure is let's say 100, then I can train there. Or I can go up. Okay. So that's doing manual pressure. And then, oops, I keep hitting the wrong button. Okay, and then we can go to, all right. Now we can go to personal pressure. So when you're choosing your limb occlusion pressure, what this will do is it'll set what your LOP is. So let's say I wanted limb occlusion pressure in the upper extremity. We typically do between 40 and 50% of our LOP. I would choose uh, 40 if I'm starting off. Okay, and then I would hit enter and it would find my, uh, my 40% LOP. If I wanted 50%, then I would do 50%. In the leg, we typically do 60 to 80 LOP. So you could do the same thing. So I think that's it. I mean, it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty uh, easy and fast. The only other option would be the ischemic preconditioning setting, which I said is typically defined as somewhere between 80 and 100 
but normally I use IPC as 100% of limb occlusion pressure, meaning you have no blood flow in or out of the limb. So Joseph, does that, uh, does that help? All right, 121, I appreciate everybody jumping on today. Next week, um, I will talk about osteoporosis and osteopenia. Um, if you want the class in the meantime, go to medbridge.com. I wrote the class and shot that video last February specifically for um, Medbridge. I think it's about an hour, it might be two hours, can't remember and how many CEUs you get for it. Um, I appreciate everybody jumping on. This list keeps, keeps growing more and more, which is awesome. I, um, you should be getting an updated newsletter within, it's about four days. I think it's going out on the first. So the first and the 15th, I kind of share with a newsletter uh, via email, whatever articles and things that I think are cool. Um, these replays do go out and um, I also will post them with caption, I should say my assistant posts them um, with caption. I don't even know how she does that on my YouTube channel, just Ed LaCara. Thank you guys so much. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for now. Uh, Patricia, so um, go to, you should have got an invite to my Smart Cuff Academy, which is, um, which is our app that has like a three week on ramp program and it has videos of me demonstrating. Now I haven't updated because I just shot them last week of the new unit, but you'll see everything that you need to see in there. Um, if you do not, if you didn't receive that invite, just shoot me an email, ed at smarttoolsplus.com. And I'll get you added as soon as I can. All right. All right. Thanks so much. Bye for now.